Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting equation. Z plus ln Z is equal to X and we're going to be solving for Z. That's why Z is red. Okay, I hope that makes sense. We're going to be looking at a couple different things such as the graph of this function of Z and then we are going to take a look at the result from Wolfram Alpha. See if Wolfram Alpha can, Wolfram Alpha or WA can solve this problem. As you know, and I, as I indicated in previous videos, unfortunately, and maybe fortunately, I don't know, AI cannot solve all the problems. Actually, there are quite a few math problems that they can't solve, and that's going to be that way for a long, long time. I believe at any point we're going to be able to find some math problems that AI cannot solve. Prove me wrong. Anyways, so we have this equation z plus ln z is equal to x and we're going to solve for z. To be able to solve for z, obviously, we're going to use a non-standard approach because this is a non-standard equation. What do I mean by that? We have a z which is a polynomial, ln z is logarithmic, we mix them up and that equals, to make matters worse, another variable. So the solutions are going to be a parametric meaning that when you change the values of x, the solutions are going to change. So we, we're going to get a family of solutions. For each value of x, we'll get a different solution. Is there always going to be a solution? That's a good question. So suppose I set z plus ln z equal to 0, would there be a solution? Or if I set equal to a negative value, in other words, can z plus ln z take every value? every real value from negative infinity to positive infinity. That's going to be a good question, right? And that'll be answered by this graph. Take a look at this graph. What does that tell you? Looks like it's constantly increasing and it kind of looks like the diagonal, sort of. It's a little curvy around zero, around the origin. It's a little curvy. And then as X approaches zero from the right, if you consider the limit, then the f of z values are approaching negative infinity like crazy. And why is that happening? Because of the natural log, of course. If you consider the graph of natural log, then you'll have a better understanding. Anyways, so this is the graph. I'm hoping that when I, uh, you know, just draw a horizontal line at basically z equals x, then, or, yeah, I guess z equals x, right? Then will have an intersection point. Is that always going to be a single intersection point? Looks like it. But let's just go ahead and consider f of z, why this would always be increasing. Or is it always increasing, right? That's a good question. If you differentiate this, you're going to get 1 plus 1 over z. So here's the thing. If we're talking about real numbers, if z is real, then z must be positive. As you know, the ln function doesn't accept, um, all, or it only accepts positive values. So 1 over z is going to be positive, 1 is already positive, 1 plus that is always going to be greater than 0. So since the first derivative is always positive, this function is going to be increasing. But of course, this is for real numbers. What happens if z is complex? Or if x is complex? Are we solving for z or x? We're solving for z. So let's get to work. So we have z plus ln z equals x. Now, obviously, if this question doesn't make much sense, you can go ahead and solve a simpler problem. That's one of the problem-solving strategies. You can go ahead and set it equal to 1 and think about what z could be, right? And you hopefully, quickly, easily see that z equals 1 satisfies this equation. And that should be the only real value. But are there complex solutions? That's a very good question. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look and see how we can solve this problem in general. So we're going to use a special method I said, right? A non-standard method. So for this, we need to use a special type of function. And that's called Lambert's W function. Let's talk a little bit about W in case you're not familiar with that. I know some people don't like Lambert's W, but just like it. I used to not like it, but then I've seen some information. I kind of searched it up and it looks like a good, good, useful tool and just looks like fun. So... Basically, Lambert's W function is a special type of function. It's also called the product log, which is something you can directly input in Wolfram Alpha with uh, no spaces, product log or whatever. And then it takes something like te to the t as an input 
and then it produces an output of t. So it kind of produces a very simple output from a complicated input, which is nice because whenever you have a function like f of t equals t to the t, obviously this is pretty simple because for every t, you're going to have something like this, right? So whatever t is, you can find t to the t. But the same is not true for the inverse because if you invert it, obviously you're going to get numbers w, but think about it, we might have more than one value for which uh, t to the t equals a certain value. Make sense? So think about the graph of t to the t. It's not always one to one. So there are multiple values. But in general, this is what the definition is. Make sense? Obviously, there's more we can talk about it, but let's just go ahead and keep it at that. But the, the million dollar question. For, so for all these problems, equations that you can solve by using the product log, how do we get there? That's going to be the most important part of this. So we have something like this, but we need something like this. That is the million dollar question. But we can answer it for free. Here's how. I do have an E, but I don't see an E. And I see a sum. If you see a sum and you need an E, why not use E to the power something? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do E to the power both sides. Since Z plus L and Z is the same as X, I can just do this, right? And then from here, we get something amazing. You'll be surprised. e to the z times e to the ln z equals e to the x. Awesome. And now e to the ln z is just z. And it's just amazing, isn't it? So now we get the following. z, e to the z, which is kind of like what? t to the t. Exactly. That's our thing, right? So we got that. Now you can go ahead and number W both sides, all right? And that's going to give you what? The answer. Awesome. Because remember, we're looking for Z. So if you just apply Lambert's W function on both sides, and obviously, if I have A equals B, then I can always apply a function on both sides, and this will always be implied. The reverse is not always true because that it means the function is one-to-one -one or injective, but this is always true, right? Hopefully. Well, multi-valued functions are an exception, but you get the idea. So, I guess it always works. Anyways, so the left-hand side gives you Z because remember what Lambert's W function produces from T to the T or Z to the Z, it just produces Z. So Z is Lambert's W of E to the power X. And that happens to be the answer. Well, what does that mean though? Well, if you replace x with something like, let's say x is equal to 1, then z will be Lambert w of e, which is 1, right? <laughs> Obviously, you can go ahead and just test it out with different values. And by the way, why is this working? Because we can write this as 1 times e to the 1, and when you apply Lambert w, it's just going to give you 1. But there's a lot of different ways you can get there, or just use a calculator. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.